Today's guest grew her business from zero to over $11 million in revenue in just 20 months, and their growth continues to accelerate. Part of their success is due to organic TikTok marketing, and she gives actionable advice on how anyone can use that platform to increase their revenues. Whether you're experienced with TikTok marketing or you're a total newbie, you'll learn a few proven techniques that you may not hear anywhere else. Are you looking for new ways to make your sales grow? You've tried other podcasts, but they don't seem to know. Harvest the growth potential of your product or service as we share stories and strategies that'll make your competitors nervous. Now, here's the host of the Harvest Growth Podcast, John LeClaire. Welcome back to the show. Today, I'm really excited to have with me our good friend and guest, Alicia Long, who is the co-founder and CEO of Nutter. N-U-T-R. You can find out more of the, about the product at thenutter.com. I'll give her the chance to describe the product, what it is, how they've had an amazing trajectory of success. And at the end, we'll actually talk about ways that you can learn to do things similar in your own business as well. But first, let's dive into the, the story a little bit and of course, introduce Alicia and get to know her. Alicia, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, John. So for the benefit of our audience, what is the Nutter? Yeah, so Nutter is actually a consumer tech company. Uh, we provide personalized plant-based milk solutions. So we, um, being on Shark Tank, Forbes Magazine, Wall Street Journal, just to name a few. Um, and we're very excited uh, to launch, uh, this is a device uh, similar to Nespresso, but it makes plant-based milk like almond milk, oat milk, soy milk, rice milk, you name it, this machine can handle it. So uh, we've been on, uh, it's actually most recent Shark Tank season 14. Uh, if you're wondering, uh, if we got a deal, um, I, let's just say we got really, really good opportunity. Um, but at the same time, we did decided to walk away from Daniel Lubetsky's spot offer. Um, because we think that a company is worth a lot more uh, than what they offered. So, um, but in short, I think Matter, um, you know, it presents itself as a solution to a lot of people who have the same problems. Um, because as a mother, when I was pregnant um, with my son, actually I turned plant-based about uh, three years ago. I lost 20 pounds and um, I was healthiest of all time. And I was drinking a lot of plant-based milk, like a lot of, uh, probably a lot of your audience do. Um, so I was drinking, you know, store-bought plant-based milk, like almond milk, oat milk. When I realized on the store-bought box, uh, the milk box has a lot of preservatives, gums, emulsifiers, rapeseed oil, and those create inflammation. So if you are into health and wellness, and uh, you'll realize, you know, start studying what goes in your body. So that was during the uh, 2020 peak of the pandemic. So, and I thought, you know, if I have this problem with uh, what goes in my milk, I wonder if other people are wondering about the same thing. Um, and there was one day, actually my mother uh, gave me a glass of walnut milk. And I go, wow, this tastes delicious. What, what, what did you, how did you make it? And my mom said, oh, it was actually a walnut milk with black sesame and just some dates nothing else. And I was like, wow, that tastes delicious. And I think everyone deserves that. Every mother deserves that. Everybody who drinks plant-based milk should be able to enjoy this quality of plant-based milk. And I wonder why we're not uh, able to provide that, you know, for our kids, for our family. Well, that, that turned out um, the process of making plant-based milk is pretty long and lengthy and you have to soak the nuts the night before and you have to heat it up and you have blend it and you strain it through cheesecloth. And I was like, I don't have time for that. So uh, for my own sake, and actually my, I went to turn to my husband who uh, is a mechanical engineer for 16 years. And I go, is there anything like Nespresso can make plant-based milk? And he's like, I don't think so. We can look it up. But it was not. So we kind of just got to work and we found the problem. We we're trying to find a solution. And then um, fast forward a year later, we have our first prototype and then we found a manufacturer that was willing to work with us and uh, um, and uh, fast forward 20 months after we just crossed uh, 11 million dollars in in, uh, in overall sales and um, now we are negotiating with 
biggest brand I've ever imagined, Costco, Starbucks. We are actually on Target.com, uh, Williams Sonoma, Sur La Top, um, Macy's. So, um, and we're just, you know, getting started. So very excited um, to continue the journey. And that's a phenomenal track record. I think there's two parts to it. One is having a great product. The other is having great marketing to really drive the story forward. So the, the product, first of all, I, I love the concept, the, the idea behind this. It really is solving a huge problem. We've we've tried to create or, or make our own plant-based milks in the past. And that process you described, we've done exactly that with the Vitamix blender and all the stuff you have to do before and after. And it's just not worth it, right? It's so much effort and you've made it so much easier. So now you can make that healthy choice, but without the difficulty, right? You've taken away the time and, and a lot of the effort that goes into it, which is obviously a big part of your success and great design that's gone into it. But let's talk about the marketing Thank as well. You. So that's a phenomenal rapid uh, growth, really driving to $11 million in sales in 20 months, really since launch. That's phenomenal. So, you know, if you could boil it down to a couple of things, how did you do that so quickly? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it was an, a lot of trial and error. So I went to a house day and I studied marketing and I know having a product is just, you know, really half of the battle. Um, the most important thing is figuring how to market it, push it to the mass market. So um, at the beginning, of course, uh, my mind just went to, okay, um, you know, how do we, in a short period of time, get the most uh, amount of traction? So um, at the beginning, actually, we tried uh, influencer marketing. So influencer marketing was actually what got us started. We teamed up with nutritionists, dietitians, um, basically promote our products and pr they promote to their students or their clients. So because they genuinely like the product and they would genuinely push it, you know, promote it to their clients um, and their followers. So that worked in a short period of time at the beginning. Um, but then later on, we wanted to, fa to fast track the growth and then we started to do Facebook. We started to do uh, Google. However, in the CPG or DTC world, as you know, the more players that there are in a Facebook or Google space, the more expensive it gets. So, and then before you know it, you're spending tons of money, large percentage of marketing, uh, you know, of your total revenue, and that makes it not worth it, right? Because it eats up uh, all of your margin and your gross mar uh, your contribution margin just slim. So that's when we um, really sat down as a team and uh, really looked at overall marketing strategy and thinking, you know, um, we're putting most of our effort in performance marketing. However, um, it's getting more and more expensive. So what can we do in order to drive up the marketing efficiency? Um, so we look at a couple of different ways. Organic channel, right? So organic is something that is really hard um, to handle because sometimes, and first of all, you have to um, make sure that you dedicate enough effort to uh, push out organic content. Two is that you have to make sure that your engagement is up. Um, so, and then to be able to push out. And then uh, what I stumbled upon, so I took a trip uh, to China uh, just beginning of this year. And uh, what's really interesting is TikTok. Because I don't know if you are familiar with the history of TikTok, because TikTok is so big in the U.S. now, and then a lot of companies or businesses are not fully utilizing it just yet. And a lot of them are still in the Facebook, are still in the in the Google, and trying to pay your way to play, right? Um, but then and again, for TikTok, it's all organic. So um, I took a trip to China, and then TikTok's headquarters, ByteDance, is there. Um, being in tech for 10 years, I used to work for Google and Amazon, that side of the world. And I uh, had a lot of friends that are in tech. So um, I actually got a hold of them and I said, hey, can you tell me a little bit what's going on with TikTok? Because it seems like it just blew up, blew up in the U.S. And how do we as brands monetize on the platform? Um, and then his uh, answer was actually pretty shocking. He said, well, we have not publicly announced, we secretly kind of like uh, just in a stealth mode, rolled out TikTok shop. And um, and I was like, TikTok shop? I mean, I've heard IG shop, Instagram shop, Facebook shop, but how is that a thing? Um, turns out they have done this pilot 
across eight different countries, including the UK, uh, for the last year or two. It just absolutely blew up um, in whatever countries that they um, they rolled out. So now they're making, uh, they're actually making the US the next one because US is the biggest market. Um, so basically uh, how you utilize the TikTok shop is that you can you know, start leveraging the traffic on TikTok Live. Unlike Instagram Live, because you have you can only see Instagram live content when you are a follower of that influencer. But with TikTok, you don't have to. You don't have to be a follower. So what that does is organically drive all the traffic to your TikTok shop when you're doing a live. So if you're on the TikTok platform at all, um, you see this live and people starting to sell stuff like people like clothing um, company or um, you know cosmetics and they starting to try out different uh, you know products different SKUs and in China in the UK they're doing amazing sales and the record of TikTok shop was actually 14 million US dollars within three hours of selling wow. and that blew my mind. And I was like, wait, you're talking about US dollars? And he's like, yeah, it's real data. And I was like, wow. And that's what you're looking to roll out in the tick in the US? He said, yes, that's what we're entire team is working on. So and I was like, we got to go after it. So I think with a team and I was like, you know what? We're opening a marketing studio in LA and we're going to recruit a lot of content creators. That's all we do. We're putting a lot of effort in organic and boom, before you know it, starting just within three TikTok lives, maybe it was like three hours, and then we start generating sales. And I'm not saying that it's a, the sales that you can magically just show up on your account. It takes tactic, it takes engagement. Um, you know, before you just like hit um, going live, you have to learn all the ins and outs about TikTok marketing. How do you nurture your account? Um, how do you understand the TikTok algorithm and understand the organic algorithm? And before you know it, and you can hire somebody to do that full time, um, as long as you know how to do it. And all of these traffic is free. So you don't have to compete with hundreds and hundreds uh, or thousands of, buy, uh, of you know, companies to compete in a Facebook space. That's a lot to unpack. That's fantastic. And what an opportunity. So when, how new is the TikTok shop here in the US? When did that launch? It was um, unofficially launched in November of last year. So it has been, um, they've gone through their beta program. So we were lucky uh, enough to, to uh, get into their pilot program and then really start it. Uh, training our team and then really starting to get, you know, nurture the TikTok account. And we've not grew our followers to 16,000. I'm still growing. Um, but at the same time, I think there's a lot to do before you start going um, live and then start setting up your TikTok shop. Because even if you don't have a TikTok shop, you can uh, still link your TikTok account to Shopify. So there is a way that you can um, you know, link your account to your Shopify existing stores or, you know, link tree in your um, TikTok account to link it to your Amazon. But again, Amazon takes a, a, a percentage of fee. Yep. And right now, TikTok is not taking any percentage of fee. Um, you know, I'm not talking about advertising either. So all of the traffic is actually free. Fantastic. And, and as you mentioned, there's a lot to learn. Every marketing platform is so different. If you're an expert in one, it's really hard to transfer those learnings to another, right? Going from Facebook to TikTok, et cetera. But you've put a, a course together that describes that process and, and helps other product marketers and entrepreneurs to really capture the effectiveness of TikTok. Can you talk a little bit about your, your course and, and how you teach? Yeah, so I wanted to document uh, the, this entire process when we were learning TikTok and then we got on the call with TikTok headquarters, um, their marketing team in LA was very supportive. So basically documented the whole thing. And I basically, uh, you know, translate that into uh, kind of easy to understand language. Um, for uh, Initially, it was for our internal use. 
because we had 30, 30 interns. We had an internship program where 30 interns, we wanted to you know, explain how TikTok algorithm works for our interns. But everyone's like, oh, you should share it with a lot of CPG brands. Uh, or just brands in general. And I was like, you know what? That's a good idea. So uh, through the encouragement from our team, and I, I came up with this course, it's called New E-Commerce Era. So um, the reason why I call it New e com Era is because um, I see Amazon and Facebook and Google, the traditional um, advertising as a um, old e-commerce era. Um, it has been gone off for years. It has been, you know, obviously how marketers market and watching the CAC, the ROAS, the LTV and all that stuff and for D to C brands. But how do you grow efficiently? How do you grow profitably? It all comes down to marketing because you don't want your marketing to be 50% of your total revenue. So I called um, the new uh, e-com, I call it TikTok marketing and just everything that I teach uh, in my course, that new e com era. Um, in the course that I not only teach about TikTok marketing, just how do you uh, become a, a, you know, creating content on, on TikTok. That's for content creators. I'm teaching solely just for business owners, for entrepreneurs. How do you monetize on TikTok as a platform, um, as a company, as a business? So I think a lot of, um, uh, uh, of my students and, you know, a lot of uh, people that I coach, brands that I coach, they also struggle with how do you market? How do you get your word out with the uh, minimum amount of money? Because a lot of business owners, they don't start with tons of money. Um, they don't start with angel investors. They don't start with venture capital. Um, so there's not a lot of uh, money to burn, right? So you have to really watch every single dime that you have coming into your account. So for the cash flow, and uh, with a very limited amount of cash flow, you wanted to capture that much of organic traffic as much as possible. So in my course, I do teach about the basics. So some of the audience might be like, I don't even have TikTok. I don't even like want to be in front of a camera. You don't have to. I don't. Um, but I do have 30 interns, 30 content creators that is um, doing TikTok live every single day. But it doesn't, um, you know, start with, uh, you know, didn't start that way. First, you have to understand the TikTok um, algorithm. So I'm going to share something that's very meaty. I'm not going to get keep, keep um, but you have to understand as just a business owner and whoever's on the TikTok page is that TikTok's algorithm is basically like a map, like a target map. I mean, if you think about the target, you have the outside round uh, circle, right? And you have the inside circle, you have the bullseye. So the traffic is kind of like when you first started uh, creating a new account and then you have basically just tar TikTok would just uh, label you as a new account because as you start, TikTok uh, machine learning is basically learning, tagging you, labeling uh, this user behavior and see who is this person. So let's say if you have a clothing store or a clothing company, and then, so you want your uh, audience to be who's interested in fashion and who's interested in, you know, um, you know, clothing, right? But if you are also a user of TikTok and you oftentimes and watch cat videos, guess what TikTok's algorithm is going to tag you? TikTok algorithm is going to get confused. And they're like, wait, so are you a fashion brand or are you just interested in cat video? So if you're interested in cat video, I'm just going to push all the cat videos to you. And then when you create your content, none of the people is going to buy your products because why? They're cat lovers. They're not fashion lovers. So this is very important. As a new account, you have to train your account into something that not you personally interested in, but you, you think your audience might be interested in. And then once you get into that, uh, you know, steady stage, which is a steady account stage. And then that's basically TikTok has already labeled you as um, a fashion brand. And then they, they're going to push it to people who are interested in fashion. Maybe it's women, maybe it's men, it's, you know, demographics, geographics, and they all have that data. And then they're going to push it out to those people. However, this is when most business owners make the mistake, which is start putting money behind on advertising. They're like, oh, my video are getting a lot of views. 
I'm going to get more views. I'm going to put like $10 here, $100 there. And before you know it, TikTok is marking you as advertising account. And advertising account, they want you to stay there for as long as they could. So this is when you cannot go into the bullseye, which is a celebrity slash influencer account, which is what you see is million, uh, millions of followers. So that is a kind of the uh, basics of TikTok algorithm. And I teach that in my course. And of course, there's a lot to unpack. Um, but at the same time, it's important to understand how TikTok algorithm work before you start doing TikTok uh, live and uh, uh, TikTok videos. Well, thank you for sharing that. That's extremely valuable. And as you mentioned, there's only so much we can discuss in a short interview like this. But I do want to encourage our audience to please go check out uh, we'll put the full link in our show notes as well with a discount, uh, a code associated with it. So watch for that in our show notes. If you're driving, go back to harvestgrowthpodcast.com and look up this show. You'll be able to find that link and, and get your discount. But also you can check out just to see it, what it is, what the what the platform is, or what this course is, is new ecom with two M's, era, era.com, new ecom era.com. And you can also learn more about Alicia's product at the nutter, nutr.com. What I love about your story is you've done this, right? So you've created a massive success behind this. So when you share advice and learnings, it's from real world experience that you're running in your day-to-day -day business as well, what's working for you today. And with TikTok or any other marketing channel, things change every single day. So it's important to stay on top of that as, as you are running a business. That's so helpful. And again, I encourage your audience, go learn more from her course itself and, and more about the product at, at thenutter.com as well. Uh, and if you want to follow Alicia, you can go to official Alicia Long as her handle across several different social media channels to follow and learn more about her journey and all that she's done and is, is continuing to teach. Well, Alicia, I really appreciate the time you've spent today. And uh, I just want to ask you, is there anything else we didn't discuss that you think could be helpful for our audience? Um, no, I think uh, definitely stay on top of the trend. Uh, you know, TikTok obviously have been around for uh, however many years, but, you know, in the next five years, I think uh, it's time for you know, business owners to really under trying to understand how TikTok marketing works and really trying to stay on top of it because this is the next five years you will never get back. So think about when Facebook first started and I wish that started five years before everything kind of blew up. Um, and then that's when everything is so cheap and um, you can market at a very, very little dollar. So if you want your business to be successful, um, this is something new that you can learn and you can also delegate um, to uh, content creators to do. So uh, definitely reach out if you need anything. I'm always here uh, looking forward to hearing uh, from your audience. Thanks again, Alicia. Thank you so much, John. Really appreciate it. Be sure to check out thenutter.com or newecomera.com. Details are in the show notes, along with a link where you can save if you're interested in trying out her TikTok course. Also, be sure to check out harvestgrowth.com to see other episodes we've recorded and if you'd like to take a shortcut and learn the process we've used to profitably launch hundreds of products since 2007, download our secret sauce product marketing campaign cheat sheet at harvestgrowthsecretsauce.com. Or you can set up an appointment right from our website, harvestgrowth.com, to speak directly with a member of the Harvest Growth team in a free one-on-one -on -one consultation. 